WTN invites you to join us for benediction and devotions from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament at Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama. an act of consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, I consecrate myself to your most Sacred Heart. Take possession of my whole being. Transform me into yourself. Make my hands your hands my feet your feet, my heart your heart. Let me see with your eyes, listen with your ears, speak with your lips, love with your heart, understand with your mind, serve with your will, and be dedicated with my whole being. Make me your other self, 
most sacred heart of Jesus, send me your Holy Spirit to teach me to love you and to live through you, with you, in you, and for you. Come, Holy Spirit, make my body your temple. Come and abide with me forever. Give me the deepest love for the sacred heart of Jesus in order to serve him with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Take possession of my intellect, understanding, and will, my memory and imagination. O Holy Spirit of love, give me the fullness of your sevenfold gifts, fruits, and beatitudes. Most Holy Trinity, make my soul your sanctuary. Amen. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Our own individual guardian angels and patron saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Secundum Luca. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you, they will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, 
relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. Some three weeks or so ago, in preparation, you could say, for our secular cultural Halloween, what the faithful Catholic Christian would properly call All Hallows' Eve, that is, the Eve Day before the Day of the All Holy Ones, All Saints' Day, on November 1st, the news media came out with a list of the top ten things that people have phobias of. The top ten phobias made the news just before our secular cultural Halloween, and I'd like to share them with you now. I will begin with number ten and work my way down to number one, the greatest phobia of human persons. Number 10 is going to the dentist. No offense to any dentists who may be listening to this homily now, the good work you do. Number nine, dogs. I presume mean dogs. Number eight, flying in airplanes. Number seven on the phobia list, severe weather, like thunder and lightning. Number six, the dark. Number five, heights, what was listed on the list itself as harrowing heights. Number four on the phobia list, other people, such as when public speaking was the example given. Number three, places with no easy escape. Three examples given were elevators, bridges, and hot air balloons. Seemingly so, why they give you a bottle of champagne or wine whenever you go up in a hot air balloon, huh? Number two, spiders. And number one, Snakes, the fear of snakes, the greatest phobia amongst human persons. I found it very interesting when I first saw this list that Satan, the devil, hell did not make the list. Apparently, human persons don't fear any one of those, and yet number one on the list is snakes, the serpent that we read about in the book of Genesis. Holy Mother Church places before us on this 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time the reality of the last four themes. This theme actually began last Sunday during the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time all in preparation now for Advent as the liturgical year is coming to an end, and we will celebrate next Sunday, the 34th and final Sunday of the year, as the great solemnity of Christ the King. Mother Angelica once said on her Wednesday night live show these following words, you would think that people would be more fearful of Satan in their lives than God. And yet, that's not always the case. You would think that people would be more fearful of Satan in their lives than God, and yet 
that's not always the case. I've met many atheists, many agnostics, while I've been a priest these last 10 years, and in conversation with them, I soon understand something very vivid in talking to them, and it's this. They are often fearful of God. Indeed, in their minds, if he does exist, they are fearful of him. Why? Because belief in God automatically includes a set of standards of right living as opposed to improper living. And our fallen human nature rebels against those standards, many of which have to do with the sexual mores of society. As Father John Harden would say, the holy American Jesuit priest, it often gets back to the sexual mores, doesn't it? But yet Holy Mother Church places before us the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell, to focus on in these final weeks of ordinary time. Pope John Paul II, in his great document and apostolic exhortation, Reconciliatio et Penitentia, Reconciliation and Penance, on the Sacrament of Penance, which came out in 1984, he says this, the Church cannot omit without serious mutilation of her essential message a constant catechesis on what the traditional Christian language calls the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. In a culture which tends to imprison man in the earthly life, at which he is more or less successful, the pastors of the Church are asked to provide a catechesis which will reveal and illustrate with the certainties of faith what comes after this present earthly life. Beyond the mysterious gates of death, one either inherits an eternity of joy in communion with God or the punishment of separation from Him for all eternity. Only in this eschatological vision can one realize the exact nature of sin and feel decisively moved to penance and reconciliation. Eschatology is the study of the four last things from the Greek eschaton, meaning last, the four last things. Death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Again, only in this eschatological vision can one realize the exact nature of sin and feel decisively moved to penance and reconciliation to thus turn away from sin. You may not have believed in God in this life, but when you finally close your eyes for the very, very, very last time, it will be you and him. Period. period. May we show our loving God in this life that we indeed love Him now and indeed believe in Him, in part by being eternity-minded, having before us a realistic faith of the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell truly being eternity-minded. God bless you.
Sonnen de Cielo prestitis Diei. Quinobis sub sacramento mirabili passiones tue memoriam reliquisti, tribue quesumus, ita nos cooperis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria venerare, ut redemptionis tue fructum in nobis jugiter sensiamus, qui vivis regnas in secula seculorum, The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament, be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen. 